All right, friends, so let's talk about how to graph a derivative based on a graph of a function. Let's talk about what that looks like in this screencast. So let's imagine, just for argument's sake, that you have some function and it looks like this. This is your function. And we're interested in drawing on these axes a graph of what its derivative might look like. Well, how might we know? Well, the thing that I always do is I look for where the derivative is zero. Where is the slope of the tangent line? Zero. And it appears that the slope of the tangent line is zero right about there. And so that means that f prime is zero right there. And then I look over here and I see if I were to draw a tangent line, that might have a slope of about 1. And if I were to come over here, this might have a slope of about negative 1. And so I imagine, I see the slopes getting bigger and bigger, I see the slopes getting more and more negative if I go that way, I imagine that it might look like this. No way to know if that's true for sure, but it at least gives me a nice sketch. I look for places where I have flat tans. I look for places where, okay, I think I can guess that. Okay, I think I can guess that. And then I plot those slope values in the appropriate spots. Um, it gets a little bit weirder. Here's a Oh, sorry. I slipped. That's not good. Yeah, that's G. Let's imagine that I want to sketch G prime. Well, what might that look like? Well, you would instantly notice that there are two places where the tangent line is horizontal. And so you might imagine that that's a zero and that's a zero. And you might imagine that this slope right here is really big negative. So over here, I go really big negative. And then you might imagine that the slopes start positive, and then they get more and more and more positive. And then the slopes, as we go left, start out a little bit negative, and then they, nope, the slopes are positive. I'm just kidding. That's a positive slope. That's a positive slope. They get more and more positive as we go left. And so you might imagine that the derivative graph looks like that. OK, but what do you do if your function is this? What do you do with that? Well, you want to say that the derivative well, the slope all through here is 1. Slope is 1, slope is 1, slope is 1, slope is 1. So you're imagining 1. And the slope all through here, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. The, so it's easy to imagine that the slope is 1 for positive x's and negative 1 for negative x's. The question is, what is, oh, I'm going to go magic pen, what is the value of the derivative at that point? And, well, that's interesting, because for a limit to exist, the limit has to exist from both sides, and a derivative is a limit. So if we look at tangent pieces, Coming from the right, they're all 1. Coming from the left, they're all negative 1. They don't agree as we get here. This is not smooth. And if you're not smooth, you're not differentiable. And so the derivative does not exist at x equals 0. There is no place where we're going to underline this and say, OK, the slope is whatever at x equals 0. There is no derivative at this point, because we can't draw a tangent line at that point, And we can't draw a tangent line because that is not smooth. In fact, there are four places 
where a derivative does not exist. There are four kinds of situations that cause a derivative not to exist. Uh, first is the corner. So you're graphing and then all of a sudden you do that. A corner. Where you look at the slopes coming from the left and you, they're getting closer and closer to this thing. But then you do the slopes coming from the right and they get closer to that thing. The tangents from both directions don't agree. That's a corner. The one-sided derivatives don't match. Then the second kind is the cusp. It's that scenario. In a cusp, your slopes get infinitely big. You're approaching bigger, 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 infinite slope. Bigger, 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 bigger infinite slope from, from either side, actually from both sides. That, that's what creates a cusp. Then your third situation is the vertical tangent. And that pretty much speaks for itself because the slope of a vertical line doesn't exist. And if the slope of a vertical line doesn't exist, then there is no slope. And if there is no slope, there is no derivative. And then fourthly, is the case of a discontinuity. Whoa, yes, that's disco. Very good. Uh, the case of a discontinuity. And a discontinuity, you can't have a derivative if you can't draw a tangent line. You can't draw a tangent line where there is no place to draw the tangent line. Which brings me to this point, and this is a serious point differentiability implies continuity. That is to say, if you are differentiable, then you are continuous. If you can draw a tangent line to a curve at a point, then the function must be continuous at that point. Um, as a side note, la, it doesn't necessarily work the other way. You can be continuous without being differentiable, but you cannot be differentiable without being continuous. Uh, you can be continuous even if, eh, let's see, you can be continuous without being differentiable. You can be continuous without being differentiable. You can be continuous without being differentiable. But you cannot be differentiable without being continuous. If I were to be able to draw a tangent line there, I would have to plug up the hole to do it. OK, well, that's all I should say. And we've already prepared enough for our next class. So awesome. Thanks, everybody.